All right. All right. I got to make sure I share. Right, that's I the started problem. recording right around Tom's bleep blorps. Do you not know what I was doing? No. It was a 30 Rock theme. Yeah. Oh. That's what it was. Dumb. Oh, gotcha. Okay. All right. This will work. You ready? Start yep. recording. Yeah? You recording? I sure am. All right. Here we go then. That's not the 30 Rock theme. <laughs> Behind the screen, there's a world of pure imagination. No. Behind the screen. I don't know, man. I am known for my rocking out. Many people will often say, man, I just listened to your CD. It rocks. Because when people think about me singing TV theme songs, that's the word they use. It rocks. Is that what they say? Yep. Which of those songs on my CD do you think rocks the most? Punky Brewster theme? MASH? I think MASH. Yeah? Yeah. MASH kind of rocks. What about you, Tom? What's your, what's your thought? Like what's uh, the song when you get home from work and you pop my CD in the player as I do daily? What's your immediate go-to? Oh, the, the Perfect Strangers, of course. That that makes sense. That Wings of our dreams. Yeah, that's, that's the a one. bop. That is that's a bop the jam. For sure, that's the one. Hey, hey, everybody! Welcome to the Paul Goble Show. I'm your host, Paul Goble. Joining me, as always, is my best friend and co-host, Jim Bruce. Hey, you say something. Hey, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna tell the people at home that you were waving right then, <laughs> and you just thought everyone could hear you. Yeah, uh, I uh, I was trying to get to do some technical stuff. Oh, you were distracted. Okay, yeah. and uh, generally always distracted is uh, the other guy on the show, Tom Griffin. How's uh, it going, guys? Um, so it's been a while. Uh, I don't know if anything has changed with you guys. Things have gotten worse here in Arizona, as I'm sure you saw on the news. Uh, what's funny to me is the three worst states are Arizona, Florida, and Texas. And the thing is, Texas, you kind of got to give them a pass. It's basically the size of a country, right? Yeah. Shit's going to go wrong in Texas. The state governs itself. And so, you know, it's almost, it, it kind of has to self-regulate. So I'll give them a pass. Florida... We all know everybody there is a fucking idiot. It's, they're the joke of America. It's no longer New Jersey. It's Florida, right? So why the fuck now, Arizona? As if you weren't a big enough fucking joke throughout the history of this country, now you got to be lumped in with fucking Florida. Well done, you jagoffs. Yeah. The fact that a, a, a state as huge and as populous as California can get its shit together shows that there is zero excuse for bullshit like this and like in Florida. It's clearly just idiots in charge who are making the wrong decisions. Not just yeah. bad decisions, but the wrong decisions. Do you know, I, I, to be do fair, you remember I... the Malcolm X quote about the South? Malcolm X said that um, if you're anywhere other than Canada, you're in the South. <laughs> and uh, my actually. personal opinion is is that if you're in any part of the United States, you're in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah, it's never been truer than today, that's for sure. What yeah. were you going to say, Tom? Well, I was going to say, to be fair, I'm not sure that California has its shit together that much. I mean, cases have been spiking around here, too. So True, but all things considered, I mean, that's it's pretty amazing. But then again, that's kind of California, unlike other parts of the country or the country itself, California had things in place uh, for when this kind of thing actually happened. California did a good job. The problem with California is the problem everywhere is that ultimately the we have politicians who admit what the right thing to do is, try to do the right thing, but they are still ultimately politicians and they eventually gave in to constituency weird concerns about a fictional saving of the economy yeah what we've seen in sweden i think it's sweden is that you can't save the economy by not locking down the economy because is, is that that's where they tried that right where they were just like hey let's see what happens if we don't do anything herd immunity they were they were they chose herd immunity yeah. And decided to go with that because they figured our population is so small. And they, what they didn't say out loud was we're all inbred uh, uber humans. Also, we have very high 
uh, resistance to viruses. They didn't say that out loud, but that's what they meant. Yeah. But th that's what they were going with, and it did not work. Not only didn't it work, but they were, the premise was, hey, if we don't lock down, yeah, there's going to be some fatalities, but our economy will be strong. That's not even true. Because it <laughs> right. turns out, and uh, I can, I, I don't know about you guys, but this is, I can vouch for this for my own life. Whenever anybody in my life has like, that I know has passed away, it's been disruptive. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's messed with my routine. So you're saying it's not just a normal day when someone close to you dies. Right. Not, that doesn't happen to you every day. Now, granted, I absolutely do say, boy, I'm very sad today that Ma passed away, but I better go to the mill. <laughs> but that's basically the dumb thinking, which is that, hey, if we just let this happen, people will go about their normal lives. You know how after 9-11, we just kept doing the same things? Yep, nothing changed after Solid that. Solid logic, you fucks. And you didn't hear about 9-11 ever again. When it ha Remember it happened and then it was like, hey, what happened to those towers? I had to Google it to find out. Why what would you bother worrying about it when you had shopping to do? It's not like they can knock down the towers again. It's not like they knocked down a Best Buy. I've got to go buy stuff. <laughs> or a Home Depot. Did you guys see that fucking idiot DeSantis in Florida? They're talking about going back to schools and he goes, listen. A few weeks ago, we were talking about how important it was to open Home Depots and Best Buys. Well, I think schools are a little more important. No, dickhead. You were talking about opening up Home Depots, you fucking idiot. <laughs> and yes, you were dumb then and you're dumb now. See, the problem is that you're dumb. That's where you need to start. Stop being dumb. And then things will get easy after that. Also, you can open a Home Depot. They have high ceilings. Adults go in there. You can wear masks if you think it's important, which it might be. People need I, nails. I also love the fact that every, I don't love it actually, but every, every person who wants to open schools, the first thing they say is that kids are pretty much immune and won't get sick. So there won't be any adults there. No teachers, no principals, no janitors, uh, no security guards. Because honestly, that right. sounds good to me. Let's let's tell the kids, hey, the schools are yours. Show up, do whatever you want, <laughs> and at the end of the year, give yourselves a fucking diploma. Good and luck, kids. And we're we're locking the kids in and leaving them there for the for the semester, right? They're not going home to their families every night. Let them give. Let you guys cook your own food. We'll pull up a truck to the cafeteria and we'll unload all kinds of shit for you every week. But you cook it all yourself. You learn what you want to learn. It's you, a Kid Nation reboot. That's what I'm talking about. Because honestly, how much worse could it fucking be? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's talk about television now. Uh, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll put a note on this episode that you can fast forward to this part if you don't want to hear us. Sure. <laughs> if you don't want to hear us, be dumb. We'll put a second note that you can fast forward to the end and just <laughs> do us a solid and try not to hurt our feelings. Say you watched it. Yeah, say it, give us a good review, but we, we know what really happened. Um, all right, so let's talk about this 30 Rock special thing that happened. Um, so as we've talked about many times on this show, uh, entertain, the entertainment world is changing. Movies are not be coming out. New television shows are not being watched, and everyone is going to Zoom and the Internet and so forth to make shows and to watch shows. And this 30 Rock thing that I think is only available on the Peacock Network, that's the only place I've seen it, um, is a perfect example of that because it wasn't just a 30 Rock special. If you watched it, it was very clear that it was not a 30 Rock reunion special. That was not the purpose. If it, it, what it was, was the NBC upfronts. Yeah. Uh, because there won't be any upfronts where the critics come in and, and interview people about the new shows and all that stuff. This is basically a virtual upfronts couched in a 30 Rock reunion. Um, and again, I'm not, I'm not trying to bag on it. I'm not saying that they were trying to fool anybody because it was pretty well done for, for as far as that goes. It definitely made me laugh. And I think it was, uh, it stayed true to like um, the, the finale. We all remember what happened in the finale of 30 Rock. Uh, Kenneth became the head of the network and there was flying cars and it was the future. 
Uh, obviously, this wasn't the future future, but Kenneth was in charge of NBC. And he was the genius that came up with all these ridiculous shows that for some reason people watched. And I thought all that was fucking hilarious. So when it, this is what I feel, and I want you guys to share your opinion afterwards. So when it came time to, for them to basically reveal what the show was and say, hey, here's our new, all our new shows. And then you realize, oh, wait, Young Rock, that's not a joke. That's a real show. <laughs> uh, and so you're like, oh, I see what this is. This is just a commercial for their new shit. But by that time, I didn't mind. You know what I mean? I didn't, yeah. really, I didn't really care about that. So, uh, so I was like, yeah, I guess, I guess it's okay. It's funny and this is what they're doing. And it's and again, it's not like it changed tone suddenly. There were still jokes throughout it, and I thought it ended well. I, I, I not that I was impressed with any of their fucking shows, and I thought it was really ridiculous that the Miz and Crisley were involved. That was clearly just something they were trying to advertise. But otherwise, I thought it was really funny, and I thought it was well done. What did you guys think? Yeah, well, you're you're exactly right that it it is. They did this because they couldn't do upfronts, and they they wanted something to pitch their advertisers right and at, i i don't know if they had the idea to do to involve 30 rock first i don't know i don't know how it came about but if you're gonna do if you're gonna do that if you're gonna build it around a 30 rock reunion you might as well go ahead and put it on tv because people are going to want to see it yeah well i mean i understand putting it on peacock because obviously they're trying to make people it also like aired on nbc Oh, okay. Well, it makes sense. But like people like me who don't, I don't pay for cable. I have all, I, you know, I have like 10 different services I pay for and I have to search for it. Peacock is not available on the Roku, but it is available on my smart TV. So, I, you know, the point is I had to search it out to find it. And I think that might've been part of the point is to show people, look how easy it is to find Peacock. It's everywhere. It's not a big deal. Um, but again, not like, what the shit they have on Peacock is so great. Uh, quite honestly, I was very disappointed in their initial offering. I, I understand there will be better stuff on it, but well, the price point's pretty great. So <laughs> that, right? Well, that's that's the other thing is they because uh, it's it has a unique price point service. Whereas you can pay for it with commercials. You can you can watch it for free and not get everything, or you can pay for it with commercials and get everything, or you can pay twice as much without commercials and get everything. Yeah. So um, it's 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 unique yep. in that way. And depending liked, on depending on which cable provider you have, there's a cup. I forget who it is. I want to say Cox and Xfinity, maybe like are getting Cox. the mid the medium tier for free for oh, that's subscribers. Cool, so a lot of people are getting the the medium tier. That's I good. I liked this the Thirty Rock special. Fine, there were plenty of jokes. Um, some of them were flat, but I will say, as far as a more or less remotely produced thing, it's one of the best from the standpoint of just uh, the way they did it, just from the way they made it good. And the parts that weren't like Kenneth and his lady Kenneth, I thought that was great. <laughs> yes, that was great. But also, maybe I was the only person who liked these, but when I was a kid, I loved the damn Saturday morning cartoon, hey, guess what's going to be new? And yeah, you found out that, you know, yeah all these dumb cartoons were coming out and one was about a captain who was also a caveman. I don't remember what that was called. It was great. <laughs> Some kind of military show, but I liked those shows. Yeah. Me and, too. and yeah, most the, of the time the I didn't like previews they used to do. Yep. Yeah. And I remember those fondly. And this was reminiscent of that because for whatever reason, they don't ever invite me to the upfronts. Yeah. So. yeah, I will say, uh, I mean, obviously, I think like, uh, it's at least Tom, I, I search out those fall previews for all the networks every fall, because I want to see and also I'm, I, I always cross my fingers in hopes that it will be old school. Someone will come out and go, hey, I'm Alan Thicke, and I'm hosting this thing. And here's some cool new shows, uh, which like they used to do when we were kids. Um, but this is obviously the newer version of that. The disappointing part is there aren't as many new shows for obvious reasons they, because they they're only basically showing here's the new sh here's the shit we already did uh and we're going to show it in the fall and hopefully this will all have blown over but uh, i was honestly it was disappointing to me because i don't think there was one of those shows that they previewed that i was that i found interesting i, I liked the preview for the show where uh crap crap's fallen from space what was that called 
I don't even uh, remember De that. Debris? One. Was that Debris. What it was? Oh, Debris, right, yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, and uh, that one with Alan Tudyk, was that on NBC? Where he's an alien? I think that's going to be on sci fi. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, well, that, there you go. It's a, Debris it's a, looks yeah. good to me. Yeah. And because it looks good to me, what I know is first season will be great. I'll think it's going to end well, and it just won't. <laughs> you know, it's now, funny. I've been, I've been rewatching a lot of shows. I think I told you I rewatched re Hannibal, which is funny because they're talking about doing another season. But I was going to rewatch Lost, and I watched the first episode and went, yeah, I don't think so. Because <laughs> it reminded me of all the times I was disappointed, and I was like, yeah, fuck this show. I watched, <laughs> a, I watched a little – I watched a YouTube video on Lost recently from the creators and how hard they had to fight to get an end date, which is a hilarious problem to have because they were like, yeah, and then we'll stop next year. And then the network was like, no, we won't agree to that. You have to sign on for seven years. They couldn't that's get television. The, that's, yeah. that's the way TV works. But not yeah, I, now. No, not no. now. But that's the that's the trade off. Is if when you're given complete creative control, you also don't get any money. Uh, those guys you're talking about, Damon Lindelof and uh, Brandon, uh, what the fuck ever is Carlton Coos, Those guys uh, are in it for the money, so they were getting a big paycheck. But yeah, nowadays, if you give up a paycheck and get complete creative control, the way Louis C.K. did or Zach Galifianakis. It's a lot different now, but well, the difference look, is those those shows only go on a couple seasons. Look like, at The Good Place and how awesome that show is because it was such a finite show. It's a perfect but I, show. But also, uh, Greg Daniels, right? That was Greg Daniels' show? Mike Sure. Mike Sure. Uh, he's in a very unique position to say, I demand creative control. Right. I mean, when True. you come from it's it not everybody can be in that kind of position but oh, sure. I, I mean to your point I, I i do like the fact that more people are giving up money in in exchange for creative control it makes tv just that much because better. they're still making a shit ton of money anyway true and and because there are so many i mean it's just every day there's more and more outlets for your bullshit whatever you idea you came up with right. so uh, I mean, it, it, especially when you're uh, like an unknown creator, I think that's the best thing because then if you're not rich and you're not famous, but you have a good idea, then it's not unheard of to get creative control. You know what I mean? Like, it's not the best example, but Lena Dunham, who what, who had created nothing and pitched her fucking uh, TV show with, you know, just a half a page of ideas, uh, still she was given creative control and she was able to make this thing that a lot of people liked. I think that I think I think that's the the best uh, maybe residual effect of this of giving of letting people do whatever they want for no money. The other thing is networks then do shit for no money. Well, case in point, this show Run, or uh, I guess the better point is The Watchmen. Uh, obviously, the, those of us who watched The Watchmen knew it was fucking amazing from beginning to end. It was an amazing TV show, and yet at the end of the day. HBO and Lindelof couldn't come to an agreement and they walked away. And that compared to five more years of mediocrity is so fucking great. You know what I mean? And they did that with run as well. Uh, they couldn't come to an agreement on what the second season of run would be. So everybody walked away. And I think that's that should a, have been the second I, season. <laughs> oh, call it walked away. Walked away. It would have been a good season. <laughs> You son of a bitch. There's nothing wrong with that joke, you guys. Come on. No, I laughed. Well, let me ask you guys this. Uh, am I wrong in thinking yep. everybody came back to 30 Rock except for .com? Oh, no, I was counting. I was counting characters that were uh, unaccounted for. So I'm right com. about .com, though, right? He was .com's not, not in it. He's not in it. Okay, but I don't, Grizz is. I don't remember him being, being mentioned. No, um, yeah. not Because when they said Grizz, I, honestly, I'm sure I wasn't the only one who went, where's .com? Yeah. So, right? I, I have a feeling no. he, Available. No Siri. No, Siri's not even mentioned. Mm. Yes. Oh, I forgot about Siri. Right. Yeah. No, no Paul. Paul doesn't seem to exist. Who's Jenna's Paul? husband. Jenna's oh, husband. Oh, right, 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 <laughs> right. Right. Like, That's I, right. They got married at the end of the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I like, there's not a, like a single picture of him that. anywhere. Like, That's there's right. no, like, like, like uh, Liz's husband gets mentioned a couple times. He's got an off screen line at one yeah. point. There's, a, you, picture yeah, there's of a picture of him. Him like, back there. Yeah. 
Uh, Jenna's only got pictures of Jenna. Like there's no, and Jenna and Paul were really tight in that last season. But that's, I think that's, that's uh, in character that whatever, if what they broke up and she doesn't even acknowledge his existence anymore. That, that yeah, sense. see, I don't, I don't know if I like that. If I, and I'll say, and that bother, that probably bothered me the most that Paul wasn't seemed to not exist. And okay. the other thing that, the other thing that kind of bothered me was um, Jack is, is retired now because remember like jack's happy ending in the finale was going back to ge and right, like, right. we're only yeah. like seven years down the road and now he's like now he's retired and bored yeah and if they had said something about him being forced out because obviously he's much older now that would be that would make more sense but you're right he was just sitting on his farm or whatever talking about how bored he was yeah that that was kind of weak i mean obviously they just because this is the thing i've noticed with my game show that it's much easier to get people. It's much easier to book people on your show when all they have to do is sit in front of their computer. <laughs> and it's even twice as easy when that's all they've been doing. And, you know and what I you mean? you still can't no. get Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. For some reason, Brian McNett is the hard get. Fucking Colbert <laughs> is like, God damn it, people. I told you I wanted McNett on this show. <laughs> but uh i and i mean that's uh, like people are desperate to perform so you can get really good people on your zoom show or on your your you know your zoom 30 thank Rock you reunion. <laughs> reunion thing um uh but uh, but for whatever reason they couldn't get certain people i mean obviously some people are just not available because it's always a timing thing that's what i find odd is that, you know, obviously it's easy for us. I'm in Arizona. We're on the same time zone at, at this point. But that, uh, th when you when you hit work with people like in different time zones, it gets a little, like that 30 Rock thing, I'm sure not everybody was in New York, right? Some mm -hmm. people had to be in LA and other places and they had to get on there super early or super late. That's really, that's, you can tell when you watch a Zoom show, like where the sun is still up. <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah. the joke the way people are doing their jokes or talking it's like oh they can still see the sunlight outside their window <laughs> whereas here it's fucking dark this guy ate dinner bed. two hours ago and he's <laughs> sorry he said yes by the way so i'll just pimp this right now you got to watch it i was on paul's show uh your favorite all your favorite game shows it was a lot of fun i was hilarious but alex bays out of the park knocked it out of the park and that son of a gun lives in New York, and he was fucking tired. And as old as Paul is and I am, Alex has always wanted to be 70 just for his personality. He was hilarious. It was great. For those you gotta of you, listen. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, Alex is the head writer and producer for Late Night with Seth Meyers. He's a, a Emmy winner. And uh, uh, so he was doing me a big favor by being on the show, and he was very, very funny. He was brilliant. If you do want to see that, go to my Twitch channel. It's twitch.tv slash thekingotv. Or it's also on my YouTube channel. If you go to YouTube, search for me. There's all your favorite game shows. This last show uh, is now, uh, I, I want to get people watching. So please, because I added new backgrounds. I was telling Tom this earlier. I added new backgrounds, and I'm getting bigger guests now. Uh, next show, uh, I don't know if it's going to work out, but I talked to Jackie Cation and uh, Jay Keith Van Stratton to do the next show. So, nice. uh, so yeah. check that check that out because it's a lot of fun. But yes, Alex was super super. Yeah, funny. if they if they want to do the show, you should let them. I don't know why that wouldn't work out. No, I, I, I'm <laughs> saying if it were well, yeah, okay. Um, all right. Uh, anything else so, you want to say about Thirty Rock? Yeah, no. I wanted to, I wanted to ask you guys on the broadcast on the NBC broadcast um, after the show, they played a preview for Mr. Mayor, the new right. The new uh, Tina Fey, Robert Carlock show starring oh, right. Ted Danson. Yeah, um, right. Yes. Was that in, did you guys see that? I did and it looks funny. I saw it on Peacock, yes. Yeah, I wasn't sure if, it was, it was kind of tacked on at the end, so I wasn't sure if that was like part of the package. Yeah, that was weird because it wasn't, it wasn't like in with Young Rock and all that other stuff. Yeah. It was just, uh, uh, but maybe it wasn't, it probably wasn't ready when that thing was made I don't, I don't know, maybe maybe because it's a tina fey robert carlock show they wanted to like they wanted to like give it its own place but it but like put tacking it on at the end was seemed a little weird 
It did, yeah, I agree. It did feel weird because I thought it was over. I'm glad you brought <laughs> yeah. that up because it actually did look funny to me. And Ted Danson, charming as hell, Tina Fey. So the writing's going to be on point. And I don't yeah. think she's in it, right? Well, she'll yeah. probably appear on it like sure. she does all the other shows she has created. But what's funny to me is Ted Danson, that guy fucking can't stop working. Like minimum one TV show at a time, right? Sometimes more than one. When he, the day he stops, like when we turn on our TVs and realize Ted Danson is not in a new show, that's when we know he's sick and he's about to die. Because he will not stop working until he can't anymore. And why the fuck would you? That's that fucking amazes me, that guy. It is pretty amazing. Um, all right, let's move on to trivia. Uh, last week, oh, and I want to say this. Uh, the last show that we did, the All Your Favorite Game Shows, uh, one of our listeners, Truman Cadmus, uh, played along. And he was able to do that because he answered the trivia question on the last show about Jeremy Piven. And I said, do you want to play our game? He said, fuck yes. And so he played, and he was also very funny, and he had a good time. So it I was have awesome. Players, and I have regular people, just like the game shows. So, so my point is, uh, you listening, you could play the game show as well, if you like. Uh, so the trivia question on the last show was about Billy Mumy. We talked about the Twilight Zone and how he had uh, he brought back his character from It's a Wonderful Life for the Twilight Zone version on UPN. And the question was, what other actor on the Twilight Zone did that also brought back a character from an episode? Nobody got it. Everyone had guesses. Nobody got it. The answer was Cloris Leachman who also appeared in that episode, It's a Wonderful Life. She also brought back her character when they redid it for the new. So it wasn't just Billy Mewmy. It was also Cloris Leachman who was in that episode. So. Tricky, tricky, you son of a bitch. I am a, a tricky son of a bee. All right, so here's my question this week about uh, 30 Rock. Uh, 30 Rock has done a lot of creative episodes. And now uh, one thing they did was when they did the live episode, we all enjoyed. Uh, of course, they had to do it twice, once for the East Coast and once for the West Coast. And there were certain things that were changed. Um, for instance, um, in uh, the, uh, one of the coast versions, the theme song was sung by Jane, Jane Krakowski and she sang it along with, they made words for it, I think for the East Coast. I think she did the East Coast one. So my question is, who sang the West Coast theme song? The version they did for the West Coast, it was not sung by Jane Krakowski. Who sang it? Jim, why don't you guess first? Michael Buble. Oh, that's a good guess, but it is wrong. Uh, Tom, do you have a guess? Was it Cheyenne Jackson? It was Cheyenne Jackson. Yes, well done. Good memory. He sang live show. It's a 30 Rock live show. It's 30 Rock live. Yeah. Uh, and it's weird because he wasn't back either for that. Uh, he wasn't, yeah. But he's gone on to bigger and better things, I think. Um, all right, so Tom won. So you get to be on the game show. Good job, Tom. Oh, no. All right. Uh, I fooled you. Uh, let's talk about the Hamilton and then the Hamilton polka. I want to uh, – I, have we all watched Hamilton? I, I, I did. No. Yeah. Okay. So Tom didn't Four watch times. it yet. It's on Disney Plus, and I quite enjoyed it. All the shit I talked about Hamilton, of course, it's a very good musical, and uh, I can see why people lost their shit over it. Here's what I found so amusing because of when you watch it, I don't care who you are, you're going to be humming one of the songs from it for at least a day or two afterwards. One of these songs will stick in your brain. For me, it was King George's song, which if you watch the show, you, re you realize, um, un unlike a couple of people in the, in the chorus, King George is the only white guy in the whole show, played by Jonathan Groff. He's the only white character. He's the only white man in the whole show. Everyone else is a person of color. Uh, so he comes out and sings his song. But what I find funny is it's a song that really appeals to white people. Because, of course, most of the songs are hip hop or a little more urban. But because he's the white guy who comes out, he sings this cool pop song with these cool bouncy lyrics and this neat hook. La -da 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 -dai -da -da -da. It's very fucking cool and bouncy. And I thought that's got to be by design, right? White people who come see the show go, ah, oh, I love that song by King George. That was awesome. It was quite the, quite the tune. But then people of color, of course, get the deeper meaning to it. Um, that, that was my feeling. I, I, I enjoyed it. But I found that funny because I sing that song all the time now. Well, if, uh, so I've watched the musical more than enough for me and Tom because uh, <laughs> I've been watching it a lot. Um, I watched Lin-Manuel Lin Miranda. Yeah. Hey, 
Hey, are you a Lin Manuel Miranda, or are you a, a Lin? Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Lin Manuel Charlotte. Yeah. Yes, that's what we, we get it. Oh, oh. too bad. Well, that's I, that, that, what I liked about that was how well executed it was. <laughs> yeah, it was perfect, as yeah. well as it could ever be. <laughs> so true. True, it is the best you could hope for. So different characters. <laughs> first of all, different characters are written to rap in a different style. That's intentional, right? Yes. And you've got some people who are rapping in sort of an old school Grandmaster Flash kind of style, like very rip, old. Rap, a rip diddy rap, a rip, rip, yeah. rapidity rip rap. For example, George right. Washington, who's older than the other characters, he does that. Then what they say is that King George, of course, is from the old guard. He is what they're rebelling against. So, of course, he is represented by the status quo, which yeah. is just the brilliance of how it was written. So the song that stuck with me, man, fucking right hand man. I can listen to that all the time. Really? George Washington, man. It's so good. And of course I listened to it because when I was the most likely to listen to new music in the eighties, it's run DMC. So it's got a hook that I can certainly enjoy. Plus the story part of it. I fucking look, I'm a moron. We all know that. I listened to the lyrics. And I'm like, ah, I got to go read about history. And I did. I actually went and was like, Oh, I got to read about uh, Alexander Hamilton stealing these cannons. And I did. Okay, it was great. Good. Well, uh, then I guess it, if nothing else, that show got you to read a book. Yeah. So that's pretty great. Well, I watched a YouTube video, a different one, but it was very close to reading the book. <laughs> I think there should be a, a musical about every president. Uh, well, I guess he wasn't, he wasn't president, but about every like founding father uh, and and government big wig but it should be in proportion to what they did like how long they were in office and how many cool things they did like you know george watt do one about george washington a lot of shit abe lincoln that's going to be two three eight uh performances but then you got my name is william henry harrison and there's a lot of that's it end of the show no yeah. more right because he died there's about uh, two things I haven't done, and I'll do one. I'll do one. It's dying. Uh, do you have an aversion to it, Tom, or you just not really got around to it that yet? Yeah, it's more the latter. Yeah. Like, well, I think it's it's funny to me that uh, uh, I mean, obviously, this deal was in place with Disney and and him to do this, and you know, I'm sure Disney was like, we'd like to own this musical if possible, and. Miranda was in a position to say, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, but they had this deal, some kind of deal in place. And then I think it's funny that it probably because of the pandemic, Disney was forced to cave and say, yeah. all right, all right, we'll pay you and show it, but you can still own it. And I've heard a lot of people talk about that these days. Um, like when you look at Will Ferrell and all the stupid shit he does, uh, ultimately he owns all that stuff. You know, he owns Ron Burgundy, him and Adam own that so anytime they do a ron burgundy thing they get the money from it which is pretty amazing uh i was i was reading an interview with uh uh some hispanic comic i can't remember who it was but they were talking about working with cheech from cheech and chong and cheech told him you want to succeed in this business you need mailbox money create your own shit and own it and live off of that and, uh, and I found that funny because that's what, obviously that's what Miranda's doing. That's what more people are doing these days is making their own thing. You know, unlike the old days, like uh, I look at Mike Judge when he made Beavis and Butthead, he had to give that to MTV. He had no choice. It was, if you want your cartoon on MTV, you give it to us and we own it. And that was the only place to show it. Yeah. You know, now uh, Mike Judge was like, okay, well, this isn't my only idea. So I'll go ahead and do that. Then, of course, he came up with three or four ideas that he owned and was greater. But it's different. I think uh, people are getting smarter now and saying, well, I don't want you to own it. And I can just put this on fucking YouTube if I want. True, true. So, hey, can I a, a little thing about Disney Plus? So, of course, I love watching Hamilton. I think probably like you guys, I, I will visit the Marvel section a lot. Uh, 
it's jarring to see that stupid Fantastic Four movie listed. Really it's like, oh, remember the second Avengers? It wasn't as good as the other ones, but you still kind of <laughs> liked it. It was still a pretty good movie. I remember Iron Man 2. At the time, you didn't like it that much, but in retrospect, some cool stuff happened. Hey, remember <laughs> this horse shit? <laughs> this is also somehow the Marvel Universe. <laughs> Tell me this. How many times have you seen that and go, oh, maybe I should check that out? I do it almost every time I see it. I think I should check that out. But then I remember I tried to watch it once and was like, fuck off. Well, I got 20 minutes in and turned it off. I, I have never thought. Which, so I, I which, uh, uh, okay, hold on. Which Fantastic Four movie are we talking about? Are we talking the about latest. the latest? Yeah, I assume oh, we're, that talk one? Okay. we're talking about I've seen the all Miles four of them. Television. Including the uh, the so Roger, Corman, Roger Corman one. Because I've never seen that, and I would like to. So of all four, I, I guess the sequel to the second, to the, the middle one, probably isn't fair. So of the three original origin movies, which would you say is the best? Which one did you enjoy the most, is my question. Oh, well. Uh... My if favorite was Silver Surfer, but that's... If you're gonna ask which one I enjoyed the most, I would okay. So enjoyed, <laughs> which one did you enjoy and which one is the best? Are two different questions. I know and, that's why I changed it. Enjoyed, I'm gonna have to go with the Roger Corman one because there's some, there's like the, the the performance of Doctor Doom in that was strangely fascinating to me. Maybe it's just because he the suit was like, I don't know if it was rubber or foam, but it was like not up to today's standards where they can make it an, a fairly articulated armored suit for someone to act in and the guy was just over articulating a lot he was just like waving his arms around it was like a strangely like performative like dr That's doom awesome. was just sort of like he was very handsy in the way he talked and i and, became fascinated with it as i was watching it i love it and yet less ridiculous than the version with julian mcmahon where he takes his trophy and puts it on his face for some <laughs> fucking reason yeah so i uh stupid I like the first one fine. When I say first, I mean the Jessica Alba one. Yeah. I think it's fine. The things I don't like about it have nothing to do with the actors. I think Jessica Alba gets in. I don't think she's often treated fairly. She's given horseshit to do and people go, why isn't she a genius? <laughs> it's not fair and dumb. I think she did fine with the material she had. I... Reed Richards needs to be older than he was. Reed Richards needs to be more confident than he was. He needs to be a scientist more than he was. It's almost always that that's the problem. The characterization of the Fantastic Four, in my opinion, stands and falls on fucking Reed Richards. If you get Reed Richards right you'll probably get everything else right. Because strangely enough, he's the hardest character to nail. Be you know, like, he, they need like a John Hamm type to be Reed Richards. Yes. They need, they need somebody who's magnetic and charming even when he's aloof and a dick. That's yes. Reed Richards. Yeah, yes, that's the thing absolutely. about uh, Yoan Griffith, especially. I mean, uh, obviously, he's good looking and he's charming and, you know, plenty of people think he's interesting. But when he plays this character like such an aloof, clueless jagoff, especially when you're married to Jessica Alba, yeah, it's fucking absurd. And I don't, and it's just lazy writing to have Johnny go, yeah, he's the dumbest smart guy around. We fucking it's, know that. We've read the comic, okay? And a testament to how it's the writing, not the acting. At the time, everybody was like. Ah, oh, this fucking dick who's playing the Human Torch. What a piece of shit he is. <laughs> right? And, and then apparently they were all fine with him playing the mo one of the most famous... And fucking uh, nailing it. Heroes. And the yeah. other thing, too, is... Killing it. Damn it. Tom, back me up, please. you got to get Reed Richards' hair right. <laughs> you got to. He's got the dignified gray on the side that Jim Bruce as a child prayed for. Yeah. That's his... It's half his character is, it's not halves, I guess it'd be thirds. Stretching, being real smart, and those fucking charming, that charming prof professorial hairdo. Great Come on, time. you I fucks. Think, and he smokes a pipe. They should, 
<laughs> they, if they ever make another Fantastic Four movie, for God's sake, skip the origin story because that's like the least yeah, interesting. Obviously, the, that's the least interesting Fantastic Four stories. That, that and it's a pretty, it's kind of a dumb origin that is kind of stuck in its time. Like let's yeah, just skip very that. early comic book. Let's origin. let's jump in the middle. That's a more interesting Fantastic Four story, and 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 I I I, I cite this a lot. I I always cite the first Thor movie. Um, one thing that the first Thor movie did well was it doesn't take any time at all to explain any of what it's doing. It doesn't yeah. tell you who Thor yeah. is. It doesn't tell you what his powers are. It doesn't tell you how the hammer works. It just trusts that the audience will keep up, and they do. Everybody was fine. Nobody was confused by the Thor movie. Yeah. Everybody got it. Yeah, so, I, like, it, it, yeah, you can jump in the middle in a superhero story, and people will catch up to you. How great would it be, too, if you skip the origin, and just at some point, Johnny Storm goes, Hey, remember that weird time we fought a, a mole man? Yeah, that's kind of fun. Yeah, They're, mole man, yeah. It's, it's funny because, you know, like, unlike other superheroes, like Iron Man is, I think, a, a great example. His origin story is not only good and unique, it's important to who he is and the world he lives in. Uh, but, you know, n not any fault of Stan Lee's, uh, the Fantastic Four got caught in cosmic radiation. The end. That's what happened. It's not that interesting. It's it's lazy writing. Oh my from god! A guy, I, from a I guy just, who was doing everything himself. So I just realized what's going to happen. I just know what's going to happen because okay. So the origin of the Fantastic Four was that Reed Richards built his own rocket and they launched themselves into space and then got exposed to cosmic radiation. Right. Right. Well, hey, what is every fucking rich guy in the world trying to do right now? <laughs> right. So that so <laughs> the new the next Fantastic Four reboot, Reed Richards is gonna be he's gonna be Elon Musk or or Richard Branson or whatever. I like, love it. He's gonna be the, the dumb rich technologist who launches himself into space and actually becomes a superhero. That I say be, well, write if that it, script and uh, uh, register it with the the WGA, Tom. And I'm gonna use this as an in again to recommend to people because I do this every now and then. You want to see one of the best versions of the fantastic four watch the venture brothers <laughs> their hey. take the their satirical view my favorite that reminds me uh at the game show in the final round of the game show everybody has to answer a question in their their own chosen uh topic of expertise and jim picked the venture brothers but he didn't know the question i wanted to ask you tom okay uh, see if you knew it the question was uh, on uh, an episode of the Venture Brothers, they have a tag sale at the compound mm -hmm. and a, a, a famous musician from a famous band shows up. Who is that musician? Oh. Or, or was it what band is he from? I think the question was what band is he from? Oh, I should know this. I've certainly seen that episode multiple times. Yeah. But I haven't seen it in a long time. And Venture Brothers has lots of musicians. And yeah. They, yeah. Lots of there are a lot of characters that are based on musicians or imp implied to have been musicians at one point. And some are major characters. David Bowie yep. is a major character on David the show. David Bowie and I mean the two of the two of the members of the um the guild council are heavily implied to have once been Buddy Holly and the Big Bopper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So um, do you have a guess? Gosh. No, I'm embarrassed, but yeah, I I oh, okay. it's not coming to mind. I should but know this. You don't have to feel bad, Jim. It was Dave Gahan of mm. Depeche Mode. And I watched, I remember I watched the clip. I looked it up just to see how prevalent it was. And he straight up says, it's Dave Gahan of Depeche Mode. So it's kind of obvious who that is. Um, did we want to talk about the, the Weird Al Polka version of Hamilton? Yeah, I do. That's pretty funny. I watched it. I like it. I, so a couple things is I think it's kind of cool how those two guys are friends Lynn manuel and Weird Al are friends, and they're both, I watched them a couple times, nerd out on each other. Like, it's that kind of a, I think you're amazing. And I, I had a couple things I thought were incre were cool. Like, Weird Al talked about how in an interview, in an interview he mentioned he's never going to do that live because it's impossible. Because in the middle, he... Um, does the rap that Thomas Jefferson does and fuck good luck that is <laughs> that is impressive and of course Weird Al nails it probably after 
30 hours in a recording booth or whatever. Yeah, yeah I'm sure he, he did a few takes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's really great. And then the video itself, I don't know who did the video, but somebody took Hamilton um, and and lined it up perfect with each clip from the movie, and they got the pacing right. So a lot of good editing. And then yeah. Weird Al tweeted it, so it made it official. It made it canon. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's funny that when when somebody makes a video for someone else's song, and the guy and the guy whose song it is goes, "Oh, that's cool. I like it. That's the video. Uh, that's that's kind of a nice thing, right? It works out, and it, it's kind. I think it's although a nice I guess thing wouldn't it be weird if you found out weird? Wouldn't it be odd if you found out that Weird Al was litigious about his songs? <laughs> <laughs> well, that'd be weirder, really funny. I'm sorry, odder things have happened. Yeah. Yes, we could see when he gets old and uh, starts to lose his shit, he decides to start suing everybody. And this would be the greatest. He sues at people for using his songs that are parodies of other songs. That's what I'm saying. How great would that be? And then at he, gets, some point, he gets really confused and like sues one of the original artists, claiming right. they ripped him off. <laughs> He's going to sue the Kinks. For that Lola song. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> yeah. You took a nice, pure thing and made it dirty. I wrote a song about food and deliciousness, and you turned it into a song about gangs and fighting. I don't know how you did that now that you're dead, <laughs> but I will sue you for everything. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, it's a good video. Go watch it if you haven't. Uh, that's it. I don't have anything else to talk about. Well, I, I um, I did. Oh, I watched Scooby Doo. Oh yeah, yeah. you wanted Scooby to talk about Scooby Doo? Yeah, I just, I just discovered it on Amazon. It's called Scooby Doo, and guess who is, uh, is the name Although, of the show? If you want to watch it on Amazon, I, apparently you have to act quick because it, Amazon told me that uh, the first season's only going to be there till the thirty first. Yeah, because they just released the second season, so which I guess is only available on Boomerang, uh, which I do not have. So, but. I I was going to say the reason I, I, I like it and the reason I started watching it is because um, it's uh, every episode uh, has a guest star on it. And it's like the old Scooby-Doo movies. When I was a kid, it was like Davy Jones, Sandy Duncan, uh, uh, and guest stars like that. Who and of were... course, Batman, who's on this one too. <laughs> yeah. Well, that one, Batman and Robin were on the original one. This one, it's just Batman. But also there's the Funky Phantom uh, in one episode, which is kind of neat. And Speed Buggy shows up. So it's guests like that, but it's also, I mean, it's not just like who they could get. It's also pretty funny. Like Weird Al does an episode and Steve Buscemi does an episode and George Takei. And, and it's very self-referential, you know, in almost every episode, Velma just doesn't lose her glasses. She loses them and then goes, my glasses, my glasses. I can't see without my glasses. They make a point of like driving these gags home really quick. And in some cases, like, did you guys watch the Keenan Thompson one? Not yet. I didn't watch that one. That one's to. very, very funny because Keenan and Shaggy and Scooby are apparently real tight. So there's just like this running gag with them being stupid through the whole thing. And, and that's what I think sets it apart from old Scooby-Doo's is that, oh, the Ricky Gervais one does that a lot because it's not just Ricky Gervais. It's him and his cat, Ollie who, you know, had her own Instagram account and, and Twitter account. But Ali is a major character, but Ricky Gervais is referencing shit throughout the show all the time. And, does, he, you know, does he call Velma a minge? <laughs> I don't think that's appropriate. But if you know anything about me, you know how much I love, uh, you know, the postmodernism and, uh, and all and that wackiness. And The Postman, I love that movie. And having real people interact with Scooby-Doo, just like one of my favorite Supernatural episodes was that Scooby-Doo episode of Supernatural, which I, I, it was one of the most brilliant things I've ever seen. I love that shit. So if you like that kind of weird postmodernism type stuff like uh, I do, this show is great. What episodes of the show did you guys watch? So I went ahead and watched the Weird Al thing, and I'll say just one quick thing and then let Tom take over, because I think you watched it too, right, Tom? Yeah, I watched a couple episodes. So the one thing I thought about the Weird Al was I was like, man, it's expensive to have him do songs, so he's just singing horse shit. <laughs> yeah, and that was fine. Around. I understand how that works. You're not going to pay him to compose a good song. So, But I also found it funny that it's not Weird Al. It's the character of Weird Al. I found that enjoyable just 
Because I kind of do. Because that's he does that a lot in different interviews. Well, and, it's the guy. It's the guy from the Weird Al show. Is yeah, he? and his character kind of changes depending upon what he feels like doing. Because he's not a good actor. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved it. I loved it, Tom. Is, wasn't he also oh. in an episode of Brave and the Bold? Didn't they do a Brave and the Bold where Batman teamed up with Weird Al? I seem to remember that. I don't know. Like Batmite took over and put weird Even the bold is one i have not gotten to yet uh, oh, I, yeah. it's, I, okay. I know it's supposed to be real good but i haven't seen it yet that's on dc um, uh, universe or whatever he, so. he does he does have a, a recurring part on teen titans go as the voice of dark side that's right really yeah that's hilarious <laughs> teen titans go a, another very good funny show cartoon. uh which ones did you watch that you like tom so i watched the weird Al one because weird Al, mm-hmm. and i watched the uh i watched the first episode with chris paul right <laughs> which is pretty and, funny and I was surprised. I will say, Weird Al is a much better actor than Chris Paul. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty bad. <laughs> well, but it remind, but it's so much like the old show. That's what I like because, like on the old show, every once in a while, because obviously they're not all in the room recording it at the same time. Right. So that's the one thing that non-actors can never do is pretend to act when there's nobody there. Mm-hmm. And that's you know where you get Chris Paul saying, "Hey, Shaggy, what's that?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's where you get bad act people who don't know how to act doing shit like that. But right. I, it, it was like the it was like the original show when they had people on who were who were musicians. And you know what know I'm looking to forward to? Like legit, I'm looking forward to. I'll probably watch it tonight. Can you guess which episode I really want to watch? Um, is it is it the last episode of season two? Because let me read this program description for you. I had I had to save this because I thought this was terrific. This is the the description for the last episode of season two. When Neil deGrasse Tyson gets trapped on the International Space Station with a horrible monster, Bill Nye arrives to save his good friend with the help of Velma and our mystery-solving gang. Yeah, they had to team them up together. I got to watch that one, too. Uh, You know, Paul, you're a bad friend because I'm probably going to watch all of these tonight. Um, (laughs) I'm kidding. It's great. But I fucking cannot wait to watch fucking Wanda Sykes. That one's very funny. (laughs) Of course it is. I Wanda Sykes is somebody whose rhythm I didn't catch on to right away when she when I first became familiar with her, just because I found found her voice grating the way that. <laughs> but then when I kind of got it, I was like, "Fuck, this chick is funny. She's so funny." Yeah, she's hilarious. I've I come to say, appreciate her, so I'm looking forward to seeing this her in this show. I want to say about the Batman episode. One of the things I like about these Scooby Doo episodes because it, it reminded me how, and this is a Scooby-Doo thing, but how every new place they go to, they have to justify it. Like somebody knew somebody, they're a relative or whatever. And my favorite is the Batman one. Apparently Daphne's grandfather knew Alfred. They worked together. (laughs) They was on their polo team together and that's why they're going to visit him. But then on the way, they get passed by the Batmobile. And that episode is, if you're not going to watch any other episode, you have to watch that one because... The best part is, uh, here's the the thing I like about the show 100%, is that it's never a monster. It's never, ever a real ghost. It's never, ever a real monster. Even when Wonder Woman shows up and goes, I have to kill this minotaur, they all go, no, 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 no. It's a guy in a mask. Don't kill him. We don't know who it is, but we know for a fact it's a guy in a mask because it's always a guy in a mask. Like on Goober and the Ghost, or not, but when the Funky Phantom episode. When they show up and they're like, wait a minute, this is a ghost? There's no such thing as ghosts. They can't get over it. They can't accept that there's an actual ghost. And even when Abe Lincoln's ghost, they're like, nah, there's no Abe Lincoln ghost. I, yeah. I love how they justify every single one they go to. The one and thing I the one thing I, is my favorite. The one thing I don't like, and I'm sure it's a budget thing. The animation's fine. I don't mind the animation. It's not great, but it never was. But it's fine. The original show, I loved when they were running around to, hey girl, you got me running, na 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 na, na. and I miss that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's as much a part of the original as the masks. Yeah, it good stuff. Was some cool pop song, but they didn't do it, and I know it's money, so I don't blame them, but I sort of miss that. Well, it's because they had to spend all the money getting Frank Welker. <laughs> because, uh, he doesn't work for cheap these days. The guy is very expensive to get, and they knew they couldn't do it without him. I like that. Uh, 
they, I especially like that it's Frank Welker, but I also like that it's Matthew Lillard as Shaggy because um, he knows what he's, he's good at it. He, he's, he's good at the voice. Let him do it, I think. And also our friend Kate Micucci does Velma. She's great. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Anything I else? Was, before- I thought it was funny in the first episode where, I mean, so they go to, there's a, there's a celebrity golf tournament being hosted by Chris Paul. And the tournament's in danger because there's a swap monster that's kidnapping the golfers. Right. Because he's try- apparently the swap monster is trying to sabotage the charity tournament that's going to save the art school. And then the mystery gang show up to <laughs> investigate the swamp monster. And also Shaggy's going to be Chris Paul's caddy. And that's not enough going on. So they also throw in this like bullshit half-assed plot line about these two like varmints like harassing Scooby, like groundhogs, like Try, like stealing Scooby's food and messing yeah. with Scooby for some reason. A, like, ba- it's just, a background story. It's just out of nowhere. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, I, I, I love it. I also like how they show, like, uh, they, every episode they give, like, like they'll be like, a guy who wants to tear down the school and build a building there, and they go, oh, well, clearly he's the one who did it. <laughs> and then, hey, I want to I wanna drill for oil. And then it turns out there's, like, four different suspects, unlike the old show. They've upped their game and said, okay, I'll, it could be any one of these four people, but it's definitely not a ghost and definitely not a monster. Let's not it's, even go there. It's funny how they've doubled back on that, though, for because for a while, the Scooby-Doo franchise's thing was, now it is ghosts. Now yeah. there are monsters. 13 yeah, like, Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. Yeah, well, it was the Cartoon Network movies they were making for a while, like the cartoon movies they were making for a while. Yeah, like, the Hex Girls. They, they decided all that, okay, now it, now like it is going to be girls. supernatural. Yeah, stuff. vampires and shit. Well, and the Hex Girls appear in an episode of this. I they're they're that, a guest yeah. on one episode, yeah. So that's funny because my kids used to watch that Hex Girls movie all the fucking time. They used to sing that song. They loved it. Uh, I'll just say we don't need to talk about it, but I watched everything you asked me to watch. I actually made an effort. I was asked to watch this show called Good Enough, and it's not. I, I can't, that show is not available. For there's not. Watch. There's no show called Good Enough. What's it called? Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> I was close, close enough. That's good enough, right? It's close enough. I watch close enough. I don't think I enjoyed it, but I, I only watch one. Maybe it gets better. You like it, Tom? Is it a good show? I like it. Yeah, okay. it's it's the new sh- it's the new show from from JG Quintel, the guy who did regular show. I could and, tell from the animation. Yeah, the animation. So, yeah. And where and where can I watch it, Tom? HBO Max. Well, I I already tried to find it on HBO, and don't call me Max. Done. 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 Jim, uh, why don't you do your mashup and we'll uh, bring this thing home. All right. So do you want a shitty one or a terrible one? Your What's choice. the difference? All right. Today on this show, we're driving a car. We're comics driving cars. What is the deal with the horn? Does it do something? I don't know. I can't hear. So right. what is the deal with... <laughs> right. You're deaf and right. you're like Jerry Seinfeld. Right. Yeah, I, I am Jerry, right? <laughs> yeah. And I'm You're, funny. Yeah. Driving. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's weird, right? <laughs> what is the deal? <laughs> right, you're Jerry Seinfeld, but you're also deaf. Do you have any idea what this is, Tom? Uh, who? It's Jerry uh, signing or Jerry sign yeah, language. Or Jerry, Jerry sign language. <laughs> God. You I know, mean, he wrote a book called Sign Language, right? No, I don't know because I'm deaf. <laughs> Wait, deaf people can't read? I can't. I can't do anything. Wait, but that, that has nothing to do with you being deaf. It's just because you're stupid. It's specific to me. Wait, your deafness made you stupid also? No, I, I'm Jim. I'm dumb. <laughs> That's it's what I'm me. saying. Why do you keep bringing up you being deaf? Because you're not even deaf. You're just stupid. Right. I'm so <laughs> like, dumb, I think I'm deaf. Just... Wow, that is pretty dumb. I can hear you guys fine. <laughs> but you think you're deaf. Yes. <laughs> and what is it that makes you think you're deaf, even though you have perfect hearing? I'm, I, I'm convinced. It's because his I... sister was deaf. Yeah, my sister's deaf, so it clearly so... I'm deaf. She's my sister. How... Look, let's talk about this. Wait a minute, How... my brother's dead. What does that mean? Exactly. I miss you. 
You know, I'm not even going to die. Paul, why would you even joke about my best friend dying, you fucking asshole? <laughs> You're right. I should have um, brought but that up. I, ever, my sister's de deaf, so I'm deaf. My my brother, ha I've heard, has a pretty big cock, so I'm hoping. Uh, my wow. mom's a drunk, so I'm, I'm going to get no. started. Back up. Who told you your brother had a giant dick? This is what Who sucks. Who thought you needed to know that? Now, I'm going to tell you what sucks about having sisters. <laughs> okay, I don't want to know anymore. They love to say <laughs> shit like, no, no, not anything gross. They love it's to. too late. <laughs> they love to make their brother uncomfortable. Yes, I, I know that because you were also the youngest, right? Yeah, I'll tell you a funny family story and we can go out on this. My right. oldest sister, when I was a baby, but like when I was probably like five, uh, played a prank on my youngest sister by hiding behind my younger sister and aching me on and going, no, Jimmy, ha, 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 don't pee on us. And because I'm five, I'm like, oh, I guess we're all joking. And she got me to pee on my sister, who then kicked the shit out of me. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I like is that uh, if, if anyone's listening to the MP3, they – did not see you signing. <laughs> oh, because they're deaf too? Well, yeah, they didn't see it because they're deaf. Right? Yeah, Look. That's it. I thought we were going to go out on that hilarious story. All right, Tom, tell me. That's the hilarious. only reason I listened to it, because you said we were going to go out on it. Hey, do you want to hear my condom story? Oh, Jesus. All right, that is the show. Uh, thank you for listening, everybody. Uh, Jim and Tom, thank you for showing up, and uh, we will go fuck ourselves. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> uh, it's a good story.